Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you guys watched the last video, I unboxed some parts that I've been waiting for from Japan. And one of the things I didn't get to install from Mount Intercooler Kit. So I started pulling everything out of the box, trying to, um, well, I guess I really can only look at the pictures and mapping out everything, you know, what's what, what's the order where each pipe goes to and stuff. So this video is pretty much gonna just focus on installing the front mount intercooler. And I don't have a lot of time today because of still lingering Christmas obligations. So I have a couple, I have like two hours to start on this. And with vlogging, it just slows me down a lot. So probably tomorrow after work, I'll be finishing the install. Let's just jump straight into it. pretty easy compared to what my chaser how that one was set up i think there's just more like the fender liners and stuff that i had to dig my way through with the bumper and stuff but this was a uh, fun taking it all apart and i didn't really have any issues just had to get creative with a couple tools to reach some of the clamps that were a little bit hard to get to but other than that once i got everything out I just cleaned everything up pretty nice, wiped it all down. It was super dusty and dirty and stuff. And now the next step is probably gonna be cutting the bumper support up. It's not like I can fully remove it because my bumper sits on this. I'm going to have to cut it in half. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to cut it in the center so I can mock up the intercooler bolted down and then I will start on the piping. Unfortunately, there is a hole underneath the battery that I have to drill through, which will be right there somewhere. So I picked up some, some tools from my local Harbor Freight. I grabbed two sizes just in case. I got three and a half and four inch. The pipe in itself is about two and a half inches, but I want to give myself enough room to maneuver it through and allow myself to adjust it without hitting, without the piping hitting on on the uh, on the wall. So I ran out of time yesterday and today I bought some safety glasses and also got a new blade to make this go by a lot quicker. And I picked this up as well. The I have a bigger battery that's charging for it, but I just tested it out and it's cutting it way easier than my old setup. So on the air tool, 
even though it felt a lot stronger, the blade was just really small and weak, and unfortunately, it didn't accept the sawzall blade. So, I picked up some Milwaukee sawzall blades, just specifically for cutting metal, and I'm gonna finish cutting this side up. I'm actually gonna bring this out a little bit more, so I'm gonna cut that there, and then I'll be mocking up the inner cooler. <laughs> Center's fully cut out and I grinded everything down smoothly and then just threw some black spray paint on the areas that were cut just to add a little bit of protection. I cleaned it up, just did a quick spray. So I mocked up the intercooler and I started just kind of mocking up the piping and fitting everything. Tip, don't be an idiot like me. Um, I should have taped this ridge right here in the, or used some type of rubber or something because it scuffed up and scratched the piping. Not the end of the world though. You have to cut a hole right on, right underneath the battery right here. So how am I going to, how am I going to know where to cut? Well I'm using this, uh, the battery tie down hole right here as a guide. If I use this, line it up this way, it's not like I could go up right against it, so right next to it will put me right by the piping. So, down here is where I need to drill the hole, and here's the uh, where the battery tie down hook goes. So if I use that as a guide, I'm gonna drill right through here. So the hole's cut out. Um, I kind of shaped it like kind of flat here and then the rest of the uh, circle. That way it gives me room to go sideways and adjust it how I need. I, uh, I painted the edges black. And then I got this stuff. It was like $8 for eight feet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it on that. Okay, so the intercooler is installed. All the piping is routed. I have everything tied down. So let's see here where the hole was drilled. Routes through here. There's a bracket there. And then all through here. You did, they supplied the boost line, but um, replaced that and zip tied it. So everything seems to be good to go. Now it's time to start test fitting the front bumper and seeing how much I'm gonna have to trim on the front bumper so everything clears. So after many, many, many hours, the bumper is on. There's a lot of trimming involved. I actually was up till five in the morning and I did not sleep. So <clears throat> I trimmed the bumper, kept fitting it, trimming, fitting it, moving around the intercooler and stuff. Things just weren't really fitting too well. And I think a lot of it probably just to be blamed is how shitty this bumper fits. So at least I got it to the point where I'm able to bolt it on. And then my body shop, Fast Eddies will just take care of the rest and polish it up and get it to fit even better than what I can and we'll be good. So my friend David came to help install 
actually not even help he is installing my double din and the climate control so it used to have a factory tv navigation satellite thing with the climate controls on the screen so i got a conversion harness and a separate climate control unit so it's been a lot of work but He's gotten it all fitted. I think all he has left is actually a rear view camera to run and then tidy it up. I am also going to do the steering wheel. We're gonna interrupt this video real quick by feeding my outdoor cats. You guys hungry? So here's the steering wheel, and then this is the hub. It's a work spell hub adapter. I actually got it as a Christmas present, so it's nice as it tells you what to torque, torque it down to. And then it has all the hardware and everything inside here. So the steering wheel is on. I only have two bolts on it for now, um, just because I'm going to start pulling some of the trim out so I could get the cluster out. And the reason I'm doing that is because on the cluster, I'm gonna black out. I'm gonna take it apart, black out the inside so that it looks like a factory manual car. And one thing I do wanna bring up is in order to remove the airbag on a C35, you have access points on the sides and then you have to remove the factory, this thing, the uh, volume and up and down, whatever. I don't even know what these are. They're controls for the radio. So you remove that from both sides and then you have like a Torx bit socket on each end or bolt. So you need a T50 Torx bit with the hole in the center. I think it's like a, it's called like a non-temperance temperance or something like that. But you have to remove those two to pull the bag out and then you could get the steering wheel off. Clusters out. Sorry, it's kind of like a little bit damaged, which is fine, I don't really care. So popping this off is super easy. There's just four push tabs, and then it comes right out, just like that. black that out. I just used some black spray paint, did it a quick coat, let it dry. I sanded it down, cleaned it up, and sprayed it. Now just gotta put it all back together and throw it in the car.
so interior is all put back together and what an upgrade so this just already looks a lot better without all of the uh, automatic stuff so i pulled all those bulbs out and everything and black that out new steering wheel is on i did have to trim these inside ridges on the horn button for it to fit but that was actually pretty easy it's like super snug and everything went in well again david did the head unit install and converting the climate control um out from the factory navigation tv thing because the climate control is all built in there but that works you just gotta push that so that's good. And then here's a new head unit. All that's left is for him to run the backup camera, but he'll do that another day. That'll be quick. And this looks really good. He spent a lot of time getting it to fit like really well. And I really, really appreciate it, David. If you're watching this, thank you so much. I love it and it looks really good. Something I always get for all my cars is this heads up display. Um, it's like 30 something dollars on Amazon. I could put the link in the description. Um, I'm gonna order a magnet. I like doing that before I put it on the dash and that way I could swivel it around and um, take it off if I want to. If you guys made it this far thank you guys so much for watching i was able to do everything i wanted to install in the car before my surgery and before i send it off for fixing some oil leaks and then from there going to the body shop so i don't know when's the next time i'm going to be able to upload it might be a bit um, i'm hoping recovery isn't too bad and that i'm able to maybe do a couple things but for the most part, the C35 is probably going to be gone for a bit. Remember, comment, like, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.